Hey, so today I'm going to talk about my childhood obesity story, yo-yo dieting and weight gain. So look, this is the video for you if you've ever had problems with your weight. I'm sure my ladies know what I'm talking about and some of you men do too. If you've been going on diet after diet, you lose weight only to gain it back and you've been doing that for more years, you can count. This is the video for you. If you haven't already done it, please like and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to actually make this a, probably a three-part series. Uh, today I'm talking about the childhood. I'm eventually going to talking about how the early days of the yo-yo dieting contributed to binge eating, but that's a later story. So how I got into yo-yo dieting, I think I started gaining uh, weight at about six years old. And when I tell you people would not let up, they kept letting me know. Even if it was people at school, other little kids, uh, other family members, my mother, people were constantly saying, so Myra, you're gaining weight. Oh, look at you, you're chubby. And some people would try to console me and say, oh, you're just big bone. Oh, don't worry about it you know um, the weight had become a big thing so by second grade I was really really big and chubby you know and so what was going on is like at home my mother had started telling me things like oh if you get big you keep getting big no boy's gonna like you uh, you're you're not gonna have a boyfriend so that's a lot of pressure and already there was trauma in my home if you haven't already seen it see my earlier videos on narcissism in uh, the family but so trauma was going on. I had already developed an early anxiety disorder, picking the skin on my on my fingers here until it would bleed, trickling mania at one point, pulling my head. Then to add on top of that, I had the nerve to get fat. So then uh, my mother was a seamstress. She would say, oh, um, she'll take my measurements and make, make me something again, maybe a few months later. And because I was gaining so much weight, she would constantly point out that I was gaining weight and how big I have gotten and I couldn't fit my clothes. You know, I would go somewhere and dance. And I remember I was out of breath and sweating. I'm sweating now because it's hot in LA. But I was sweating. And um, I remember hearing my grandmother um, say to my cousin, uh, my cousin went to my grandmother and said, oh, Sam, really getting it out there. And she sweated. My grandma was like, yeah, because she fat, which was true. But still, I'm like, dang, it, it seemed like that was just the, the voice that I kept hearing everywhere. Fat, fat, fat. And what that meant for me that I started to believe about myself. Oh, something's wrong with me. Oh, I'm not good enough. Why are all these people saying these things to me? And so finally... I had begged my mother asking her when I was 10 if I could go on Slim Fast. reason I was begging to go on Slim Fast is because all the negative messages I heard about myself and I began to internalize that, believing it about me. But my mother was also a yo-yo dieter. Uh, const constantly going on Dexatrim, any type of pills there were, going to doctors, doing Slim Fast, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem. I don't know. I can't remember if she did Weight Watchers, but it was always something. So I grew up seeing that pattern. So um, I don't recall her losing weight doing it, but I just remembered as a young girl, like, well, maybe I can get on this and try to get some help too so people can stop saying these crazy things about me, you know, because who wants to go in school and around their family and feel like, you know, something's just not adding up, not right, not good enough about them. So I got on these uh, slim fast diets. I couldn't sustain it. Be the problem with dieting at a young age is that the kids go around other friends and the friends aren't dieting. They're eating Hostess cupcakes and uh, Little Debbie's Twinkies before they took out all the good feeling and stuff. It was still good back in the 80s. But, you know, um, Red Pop, we called it Pop. Red Pop, Red red Pop, every, all kind of stuff like that. Uh, Flaming Hot Cheetos. How you going to have a kid on a diet and then they got to go around all this stuff? So, of course. Of course, I could not sustain diets. So again, my mother was still doing every diet um, that came around. So I wanted, to, I want to jump on the bandwagon too. So if she was on the cabbage diet, she didn't want to cook it, so she made me cook her her cabbage diet stuff. Or uh, we would do the grapefruit diets. Anything that would come out, I was on it. I eventually. I got to the point where I would start exercising. I had my mother make me these iron uh, weights because she worked in the steel mill. But she made me these iron weights were really nice. And then I started exercising at home. You know, I would just kept getting more and more obsessed. And you probably noticed that yourself if you've ever been dieting um, on some type of strict diet, uh, just really extreme, that 
all you think about is your body image. How do you look? Are you gaining weight? You may be on the scale a lot, looking at the number. Is it going down? I even had, since my mother was a seamstress, I would even get her measuring tape and would be measuring my body and writing the um, numbers down and looking at it a week later to see if anything changed. I was doing everything that I could to try to move that scale. Sometimes it worked. It went down just a few pounds, but all the time it would go back up. And so... Uh, it just was never, you know, just never working for me. I, and then I thought that the exercise would help me because I noticed I wasn't losing a lot of weight with just food alone, food restriction alone. But that didn't help because I had gotten to the point that I, looking back, I think I was just really anxious because I spent a lot of my time in my home feeling scared, walking on eggshells, uh, not knowing if I was going to be screamed at, you know, that, that was hard for me to deal with. Um, but the thing was is that I think I started eating just to try to to feel to feel better. You know, we would eat out at least about maybe three or four times a week. And I'm not complaining because I like to eat and the food was good. So anyway, we would have um, KFC. Uh, we would also have Popeye's chicken. We would have uh, Little Caesars, uh, some local fish place, some local chicken place. So we ate good every week. And so all that stuff was co constantly coming in the house, so there was no way I could sustain a diet. And um, believe it or not, at the time, I could eat seven or eight slices of Little Cheese, um, Little P little uh, Caesars pizza on my own, you know. I would just sit down and just be constantly getting bigger and bigger, you know. And then um, it got bad because even by um, the time of middle school, I kept growing out of my clothes so fast. My mother had told me that she wasn't going to sew me any other clothes until I had lost weight. I think she made good on that for maybe half a year. Uh, I was walking around, you know, I wasn't going to get any new clothes so I was walking around with the jeans I couldn't um, button them up so I had to put them um, the, the two the two pieces to come together I had to stuff them inside and people people actually noticed what I was doing that I couldn't zip my jeans but you some boy actually pointed it out of um, butthead but anyway but yeah that's the uh, issues that I, I was going through and so just still being around other people and seeing that they were smaller, still hearing those negative words as I kept getting older. Oh, nobody's going to want you. Nobody's going to like you. Boys don't like fat girls. And then, you know, and not only that, I was dealing with, I'll speak on just a little bit, is about also being dark skinned. I would even have people tell me, oh, you're cute to be dark. So it was a lot of different stuff that was going on for me. And I was just trying to cope, uh, you know, with, cope with this kind of stuff, not knowing uh, what to do with it. You know, I even would join the basketball team and hoping maybe I can burn off calories and burn off some fat. Do No, I still was not losing the weight because I was just eating too much. And to tell you the truth, I would eat so much. At the time, I, I don't know, it wasn't binging at the time. It was just severe overeating because looking back, um, the binging days were way more uh, out there, more radical as, as um, regarding the amount of food I was eating. So this was just, I'd say, extreme overeating. I would always feel like I was going to burst, um, always just with stomach problems because I was just, I just couldn't stop eating, you know? And then even if we would go somewhere with other people, I remember even as a little girl, I, when I had a babysitter, I was out with her and her family and they were sitting at a different table, the adults from the kids. And I heard one of the um, people say, looking at me and saying, oh, look at her, the way she eats, you know, she's going to be fat. And I just heard that and I'm like, oh my God, again, that was the message that low self-esteem had begun to, um, had already started to set in. It was like, oh my God, something is wrong. And then I felt like it was just something that I couldn't help because I like food. I mean, I, I did. I'm not going to lie. I liked food. So um, I, I was the kid that I would go to, the, if somebody gave me some money, my mother may have left me with money and took me over a babysitter's house or my grandmother's house. And if they let me walk to the store, they would. I'm going to tell you, Samira knew at the time they would have these um, home stores. I'm trying to, the candy house and things they would call it. I knew where the local candy houses were. I had my nickels and my penny for the penny candy. Yes, I'm that old penny candy. The nickel candy, five cent candy, ten cent candy. You know, I was that girl. I would leave out of there. This is when they would give you those little plastic little baggies that you put sandwiches in. I would leave out of there with like a full, um, 
thing full of candy with my um pop and everything with it, some ice cream stuff. I mean, I just had a sweet tooth. And to make matters even worse, um, my, my mother had a sweet, a sweet tooth. I'm just remembering this. My mother had a sweet tooth, too. So she would send me to, uh, we, she, we, we would drive and she'd take me to the bakery and she would let me get something for myself, you know, like a brownie or cookie. But then she would get like a whole cake, like a birthday cake, like a nine inch cake with frosting and happy birthday would be on it because, you know, they, they, it was just pre-made cakes. So she wanted cake, but she wouldn't share it, but she would always send me to go cut her cake. So I would always cut it so I can sneak it. She always knew eventually um, that I was sneaking her cake and then she would um or go to a local um little store where she would get her um ice cream i can't remember what was it cherry I can't remember, but New York cherry ice cream, that is what it was. She would get that. She would have these Intamin's cookies. I think it was Intamin's. It's out of business now. But these lemon cookies, all this kind of stuff that she would get, and she didn't want to share it. And so the thing was, is I grew up seeing that type of um, overindulgence, overindulgence. I don't want to say that it was binge eating. I, it was just, it was a lot of food. But, you know, but anyway... I used to say to myself, this is how much I like the food and I was impacted by what I saw. I used to think to myself, she don't want to share. Even though I was going behind her back and stealing her piece of cakes and all her, eating a piece of her cookies and doing all that kind of stuff, I used to think to myself, I can't wait till I get grown. I'm going to go buy my own uh, tub of ice cream. I'm going to go buy my own cake and my own cookies and I'm going to do that and ain't nobody going to be able to stop me. And sweetie, when I got older, I did have a big old binge days okay but the thing is i think that and like i said i'm in another video so please like and uh subscribe to this so you can see the uh part two where i go into the actual binging if you think this story is something you got to come back for the binging uh video but I say all this to say that this childhood story is that I really believe that this, the severe restricting of the uh, food, uh, trying to add my and my exercise to try to help me with the uh, weight, you know, all that, which started off as really great intentions, but it turned into something that would come to a point where I felt that I could not control it so that you know that's the thing so I'd love to hear your comments about you know what do you think with this have you have you struggled with your weight what are the, some of the things that you did maybe to try to uh to try to lose weight you know what messages did you receive about your body because the thing is is that not only did I receive those messages from family uh, from friends, you know, I, I look to compare myself to uh, people on TV, the uh, the rap, the female rap stars. I would also look at other people in magazines and movies, and I didn't see people who were really embraced that looked like me. So it made me continue, like I said, to think, oh, that something was wrong with me. And plus, like I have a big butt now, but this, when I tell you. It's already, it's high and it's on my back, but I'm not going to show you. I'm not. But anyway, when I was a, like middle school or sixth grade or whatever, my butt was way on my back. I tell you no lie. I probably had this much back and the rest of my butt was all on top of it with this little bit of back. And people, even girls, everybody would be like, oh my God, look, you look at your butt. And then don't let me try to have a dance in my party or something like that. Girl, and, and see old, um, old home video. My um, grandfather used to take the vi videos and he would keep them. This butt, I'm trying to dance and cabbage patch or whatever I'm doing, a running man. And I'm telling you all, you've seen the video of my big old butt. I'm Oh my goodness. And then I had a jerry curl with the, if you don't know that, what that is, it's like the, the permy curl thing and you put all the activator in it. So I had that and I was big girl, fat girl with the big old booty all over my back. You know, it didn't, it didn't just, it didn't go, go well for myself. But anyway, um, so yeah, if, like, like I said, so come on back for the next video and I will see you next week. That's all I have. Hope you liked it. Bye.